<laughs> so, Mr. Brand. All right, council members, we have uh, before us the Department of Internal Audit. We have Mr. Mark Swan, the Metropolitan Auditor, Mr. Carlos Holt, the Internal Audit Manager, and Mr. Bob Brannon, the Audit Committee Chair before us. Uh, before you begin your presentation, I'll just ask, are you satisfied with the Mayor's Budget Proposal for your department? Um, Mr. Chairman, we, are, we did receive the full 2% cut. Um, we can live within that 2% cut. We wish it would be otherwise, but that's, we can work with the monies that we have. All right. You can continue with your presentation. Thank um, you. I just want to thank you. I'm Mark Swan, the Metropolitan Auditor, and to the right is Carlos Holt, the Internal Audit Manager, and our Chairman of the Audit Committee is Bob Brannon. In addition, we have one additional person from the public, which is Bob, um, Brad Creed, from the, represents the Chamber of Commerce on the audit committee. Uh, Mr. Brandon represents the Nashville chapter of the Society of CPAs. In addition to that, we have the Director of Finance, Mr. Riebling. Um, and then we have Council Lady um, Dow and Councilman uh, Glover. And who am I leaving now? One more. And Vice Mayor Neighbors on the committee. Um, so that represents your Nashville uh, Metropolitan Audit Committee. Their primary job is one, to receive the at the end of all this budget process, there's an actual report that says what the actual expenditures were, which is the comprehensive annual financial report. They receive that annual financial report from our external auditors, cross and associates, along with the single audit report, review that, and accept it on behalf of the metropolitan government. In addition to that, they have responsibility for overseeing the Office of Internal Audit, and their primary annual duty is to approve all audits that will be initiated in an annual audit plan part of that process. We continue, uh, after coming in after the Arts Commission, we continue to beat the drum of accountability on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we last, in the last 12 months, we issued 24 different audit reports, and we did nine investigation reports. In addition to that, we did 15 hotel-motel um, occupancy tax uh, reviews, uh, re re and providing about a $34,000 in uh, additional payments and interest and penalty on uh, taxes for hotel motel tax uh, as an initial pilot project. Um, in addition to that, uh, we've been able in the last five years to cover approximately a little over half of the auditable entities in the metropolitan Nashville based on the resources that we have. Is that an ideal situation? Maybe not, but that's the, what we have. Um, ideally, most places you'll see a three to five year cycle. Our cycle is more of a seven year cycle to be able to at least have an audit in every entity within the metropolitan government. But we continue to strive to reach that. I believe we will get that in seven years uh, on the progress that we've made because we've made a lot more, better progress in the last year. Um, our cut in budget for will be $22,800. Um, based, and that will primarily come from our management consulting, which will drop our management consulting to about 50000 Five years ago, that was 250000 um, Based on that, we'll continue to do most of our uh, sourcing, most of our audits from our internal staff and su supplementing that with subject matter experts as needed um, to help the audit staff continue to do the audit work. And with that, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Council Member Harmon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Swan. Um, I think you addressed that you said uh, you're on a seven to eight year cycle. Yes, sir. Currently, but the standard is a five year cycle. Oh, it's just, I'm just, it depends on whatever you want it to be, and, and the committee seems to be satisfied with that. We're not trying to be a compliance review process. We don't want people to look at audit as being the last resource. We do look ourselves as the third line of defense. You know, your primary controls are still your management and the control uh, procedures that we have within the Metropolitan Nashville. Usually you might have a, in a publicly traded company, you would have a compliance group between there in a SOX type world, self-monitoring, quality assurance. And we do have a lot of the, several departments have quality assurance functions, but not all of them do. And then your third line of defense being 
your internal audit function and your external auditors, and that's what we look at. But in my past experience, I've been in places where we did every audible entity in two years on a smaller scale audits, and been as, the most has been five years, though. So. Okay. Um, could you tell me a little bit how you would utilize the management consulting uh, services? Okay. Like an example of, of where you've used that in the past and how the reduction may affect that going forward. Well, in the past, um, a good example is where we used uh, for the state trial courts. We, used that, we contracted the National Center for Courts to do a review of the state trial courts. We considered them to be the premier expertise, a lot more experience than we have. And we supplemented that with looking at some of their financial uh, policies and procedures of our in-house staff, but they did the heavy lifting of reviewing the procedures and policies and best practices in the state trial courts. Um, we, one of where we used more recently was in the crime statistics. We didn't outsource a big chunk of the audit, but we hired three different consultants to come in and supplement the work. Uh, I believe we spent about 30000 there, where the state trial courts was closer to eighty to 100000 for the state trial courts. So it depends if you outsource the whole thing. Information technology, very technical information technology audits are trying to ensure that we have the security posture that we need on information technology. We've outsourced at least two audits in that area. And, and I can go back, food services way back in other areas. Sure, <laughs> okay. Uh, when, when you have these consultants or, or, or you contract, I guess, for them to do these audits, is there any type of knowledge transfer to your current audit staff that takes place? So they m might be better able, still understanding they might not be subject matter experts, experts going forward, but would have a little bit more knowledge in that area there's, going forward? There's been minimal transfer. because Primarily, we're looking at supplemental resources to help us get more coverage, trying to get to that. You know, we're only covering about half of it now. Um, there has been some in the sense that we do get the feedback from what they looked at in the areas that they consider to be risk. Um, well, once we did a Music City Convention Center, another one where we hired a, an individual to come and do a risk assessment of the contract and the risk in the construction of Music City Convention Center. And there was a lot of knowledge transfer on that particular case. So it's been a hit and miss situation. Sure. Okay. And uh, one last question. Um, is, uh, yeah. Can you give me a sense of um, how many complaints or tips or, I mean, I think there's, is, isn't there a general number to report fraud, waste, and abuse uh, in Metro? And and could you give me a sense of how active that program is? Okay, I'll let Carlos, the, whole, the internal audit manager, kind of manages the integrity line for me, and I'll let him answer that question. Well, we, uh, we began the integrity Use line. Use the mic right in front of you, right, right there in front of you. You could pull it up. We, uh, we began the uh, Integrity Line in 2008, and uh, that very first year we had uh, close to 100 uh, contacts, and uh, since then uh, things have tapered off, but uh, we generally uh, get anywhere from 15 to 20 per year. This year, so far, in four and a half months, we have nine uh, original contacts, uh, and we also are our task uh, from time to time with uh, a hotline uh, inquiry from the state uh, comptroller, and we've had seven of those uh, during this fiscal year. Okay, and, and I guess of those, do you find a, a large portion to be reporting something that's factual, or, or is it some place where people go to grind an ax? Well, uh, because somebody has an ax to grind doesn't mean it's not true. Uh, so we do find a, a good bit of these to be, uh, to be either valid or in some cases somebody's, somebody's name needs to be cleared. Somebody's been uh, you know, accused of some, some type of allegation and, and uh, we conduct a review to determine the status of it. And in, in a lot of cases that, that has taken, you know, relieve that person of that accusation. Thank you very much. Seeing no other council members in queue, uh, I would like to thank you all gentlemen for coming before us this evening and your department hearing is closed. Right, thank thank you. you.